Today we're going to talk about Deckboard, which is a Stream Deck alternative. It may not have all of the functionality of a Stream Deck, but the majority of the functions are there, which will make your streaming so much easier. When you first launch the Deckboard application, this is the window you're going to see. From here, there are a few things you need to do in order to connect it with either your OBS or your Streamlabs OBS using the WebSocket, the link for which I'll include in the description below. In this tutorial, we're going to be using Streamlabs OBS with Deckboard. In order to use WebSocket with Streamlabs OBS, we first must enable Developer Mode. In order to enable Developer Mode, right-click on the Streamlabs OBS application and then the Shortcut tab. You'll notice in the target line, I've added an additional syntax. I'll have this in the description below. This will enable developer mode the next time you launch Streamlabs OBS. Once you launch Streamlabs OBS with the attached prefix, you'll notice once you click on the cog in the bottom left-hand corner, you will see a new option called developer. Now under developer, you can create an API token to link with your deck board. Make sure you also have it enabled or it will not work. Once you have the WebSocket enabled in Streamlabs OBS, you can then open up your deck board. Click on the little cog and then under the settings tab, go to Streamlabs OBS and paste in the API code you copied from Streamlabs. Click on the Extensions tab and you can see which extensions are installed and which ones you can download. There are not many available, but these are the three that I use anytime I've used Deckboard. I use SoundPad, which at the version of this video is version 1.0.0, the Open Hardware Monitor, which is also at version 1.0.0, and Voice Meter Control, which is at version 1.2.0. Please note, in order to use any of these, you also need the third-party applications that correspond with them. I'll include links to those in the notes below. Now that we have the API token installed and Streamlabs OBS connected to DeckBoard, we can begin by adding each individual board. This is just going to be an example with maybe one or two in each page, just kind of showcasing what features are available. When creating a new button, you can give it a label and then set the action you want it to do. This will change depending on the action you select. It may be a key press, a source, or play a sound. In the Actions dropdown, you'll have a list of all the different actions you can apply to the button. For this demonstration, we're going to use the Twitch function for Send to Chat. This will send whatever message you would like to your Twitch chat at a button press. This next button we will add to our Streamlabs OBS board and we'll use the toggle source. This will enable you to toggle a source in your stream on and off at a button press. Once you select your source, you can then select the source specifically on a scene within Streamlabs OBS. From here, you can pick the active and inactive icon you would like this button to have. The next button we're going to add will be to mute an audio channel in Streamlabs OBS. This will give you the option for, in this example, to mute or unmute your desktop audio channel. This new button we'll place on a sounds board will let you play sounds from your PC. These sounds will then be heard on your stream. These next two button examples could be used to, for example, launch a website such as your Twitch dashboard at a button press or launch a Windows application. From the time of this video, the deck board was only compatible with Android devices. Unfortunately, Apple users, you're left out on this one. Go to your Google Play Store and download DeckBoard. There's also a DeckBoard Pro, which removes some of the restrictions, like increasing the size of your grid so you can have more buttons per page. Once you launch the application, this is showing pro mode, you'll get the option to look up the local IP address of the PC you're using DeckBoard on. The easiest way to do it is to hit the scan button and then on your DeckBoard app on the PC, click on the Wi-Fi symbol 
and then scan the QR code. Once you have the application open and connected, you'll see a screen resembling one of the boards you created in the DeckBoard Windows application. From here, click on the button in the bottom right hand corner and then click the cog to bring you into the settings. The options I'd recommend turning on are show a board name and hide blank buttons. You can swipe left or right to see the available boards you have created. Now when streaming, a button press can send your commands to your chat, play your audio, or even switch to other applications.